Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben. Nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to the bright side every day, you are more and more. In control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you or a loved one is dealing with a health challenge you want help with, we are here for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. We can help you change your life today. If you're dealing with some kind of health challenge and you don't know where to turn, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program like the one designed by Dr. Wallach, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. Or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010. Is our number on the bright side. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got all the Longevity products up. You can purchase them right off the website. We also have blog posts and news stories. If you want to purchase products by talking to a real human being, call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. And ask about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. If you're an entrepreneur, it's a perfect way to start a business. If you just want to get your products at the wholesale price, you can do that as well. All for a one-time $25 fee. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. You can also sign up right off the website's brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. And I also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. If you're not satisfied with your skin health products or your skincare products as they are now, there's a good reason. For one thing, they probably don't have anything in them that's very active. You've got to be an ingredient deck reader if you're going to purchase skin skincare products effectively. Always look at the ingredient deck. The silliest way to determine how good a skincare product is or whether you should make a purchase is by rubbing it on your skin, rubbing it on your arm and feeling it and going, oh, that feels nice. That's the silliest thing you could do. That's the silliest way you can make a a purchasing decision because all you're really doing is you're feeling the product. You're not feeling anything on your skin. You're not feeling your skin. You're feeling what's on the skin. You can't make an assessment on the value of a skincare product by just rubbing it on your skin and then feeling your skin. You're just feeling the wax and the oil and the silicon, whatever other stuff they put in the skin in the product. To really make a good assessment of a, uh, the best way to make a good, assa- a good assessment of the value of a skincare product is to wait a couple of days and see how your skin looks two or three days later. Now, you, of course, you can't always do that if you're making a buying decision. So, looking at the ingredient deck becomes a compromise. It's not as good as as waiting for two or three days to see how how much changes are occurring in your skin. But it's nowhere near as silly as just rubbing a product on and then feeling the product. 
So become an ingredient deck reader. You'll see on most ingredient decks, the first ingredient is going to be water. That means that most of the product is water. You'll see the second ingredient on most skincare products is some kind of wax or maybe some kind of oil, and then you'll see some more wax, some more oil. You may see some silicon. Then you'll see uh, a little, maybe a, a, a fake oil, something like propylene glycol, perhaps. And then you'll see uh, your preservatives, and that's pretty much it in most skincare products. And then you'll p possibly see some active material, if you're lucky. Most, most skincare products don't even have that, but the active material, if there is active material, tends to be towards the bottom of the ingredient deck. What's that, what that means is, is there isn't very much in it. You're paying for mostly water. You're paying for mostly water, wax, silicon, and oil. Why? What's the point of that? That's why I developed my truth treatment products. You're not paying for water, silicon, oil, fragrances, fillers, thickeners, preservatives, just active material and functional material. Things that are going to make a difference on your skin are Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream made with 100% active and functional ingredients are all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay. Thanks for joining us once again on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We've been talking about salt, and we've been talking about, actually yesterday we talked about the reward center, the reward center in the brain, and how salt can activate the reward center. And this uh, deprivation of salt that seems to be a, a major strategy of the medical model, or restriction of salt that seems to be a major strategy of the medical model when it comes to heart disease and hypertension, high blood pressure, we're all told to go on a low salt diet. It can be counterproductive when you understand the relationship of salt and the reward center. That is, when we're deprived of salt, when we go into salt restriction, we get this drive to go find salt. Low salt kicks, when low salt kicks in, we have a, a, there's a reward aspect to the brain, there's a reward aspect to brain chemistry that also kicks in. We get rewarded for replacing the salt that we've restricted artificially because we were told to restrict it. We get a, a big bang for our salt buck when we're under salt deprivation status or when we're in salt deprivation status. Deprive your body of salt, your body's going to go out and try to find some salt so it can, it, it can experience the reward activation or reward center activation. The problem is this reward center activation is cross-reactive. So it will get activated not merely by replacing the salt that you've deprived yourself with, but it will also get activated by sugar. It'll also get activated by drugs. It'll also get activated by alcohol. That means that when we're under salt deprivation status, anything we do to activate the reward center is going to, is going to satisfy our salt craving. So we may crave salt, but we'll go for cigarettes, or we'll go for sugar, or we'll go for some kind of opiate drug. Salt restriction in this way can lead to other addiction, uh, salt restriction can lead to other addiction, addictive substances. Both salt and the other addictive substances will make the brain go yippee under conditions of salt deprivation. When we deprive ourselves of salt, any yippee inducing substance will make us happy. And that includes drugs. From the Journal of Pharmacology, Biochemistry, and Behavior, a history of sodium depletion has been found to potentiate the, rewarding, the, uh, the reward effects of amphetamine, meaning those that are predisposed to salt deprivation will be more likely to go for meth or speed or cocaine for that matter. From National Geographic News, drugs such as heroin and cocaine may owe some of their addictive powers to an ancient instinct, our appetite for salt. In a new study, a mouse brain scientist showed that patterns of gene regulation stimulated by salt cravings are the same gene patterns regulated by drug addiction. This new finding suggests that drug addictions uh, maybe so hard to overcome in part because cocaine and opiates exploit the same brain mechanisms that are critical for salt appetite. All addictive substances activate the same, uh, the same brain chemistry, and when we deprive ourselves of something important, as important as salt, that addictive brain chemistry will kick in and we'll be more prone towards drugs, towards going for drugs and cigarettes and alcohol and gambling or any other addictive substance. It's like the reward center is only looking for a reward, and even though it kicks in once we're deprived of salt, any reward will do. So if you find yourself craving salt, you may notice that you're craving other addictive substances too. What do you do? Give yourself some salt. Salt water is a great way to do it. 
it's a great way to satisfy your salt cravings, and you may find that other, your uh, uh, drives for other addictive substances are reduced as well. All right. I'm Pharmacist Pen 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or the longevity, uh, longevity products or formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour. We're talking salt and salt intake. Very interesting relationship between the reward center and low salt. Reward activity, reward seeking activity kicks in when we're under low salt, uh, when we're in, in a condition of low salt. When we're on a, a low salt diet, salt restriction will activate this drive for reward, which can be satisfied with other things. Cigarettes, drugs, smoking, I'm sorry, uh, alcohol, gambling, sugar. 2009 study from the University of Florida College of Medicine found that salty food can act like an opioid drug, making opiate, uh, opiates more attractive and compelling. This can happen with sugar. Researchers know there's many similarities between sugar and addictive drugs. Both cause withdrawal, both cause similar brain activities when they're in short supply. Both, when given to a deprived patient, activate dopamine in the reward center, likewise with sodium chloride and salt. In addition to the relationship between uh, a relationship between sodium chloride salt and reward seeking behavior there's also a very important relationship between sodium chloride and the thyroid anything that happens to the thyroid is going to affect our stress response salt is a stress management substance the adrenal glands are our stress management glands and they're also very responsive to salt anything that affects the adrenal glands are going to, is going to affect the thyroid this is, this is true, of obviously, of the whole body. Anything that affects one part of the body is going to affect the rest of the, the body. It's true about all the glands of the body. What affects the pancreas is going to affect the thymus and the pituitary gland. And what affects the pituitary gland is going to affect the pineal gland and the glands of the liver. The body's a system, and the very definition of a system is that it's a whole made up of a bunch of parts. It's one entire unit made up of separate parts. That's what makes up a system. That's why you can't just remove organs out of the body. That's why you can't can't just take the gallbladder out of the body and expect not to have other effects. Expect not to somehow impede or, 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 or reduce the effectiveness of the entire system called the body. You can't just take an organ out. You can't just drug an organ. You can't just target a specific structure of the body and not affect other structures of the body. It's true about all the body. It's true about the glands. It's especially true about the thyroid and the adrenal glands. There's a especially strong connection between the thyroid and the adrenals. I call this relationship the adrenal-thyroid axis, and it forms the third point on our triangle of disease. The three points in the triangle of, the, of disease are the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal-thyroid axis. This is our triangle, and it underlies all health challenges. First, the digestive system breaks down, happens very early, sometimes in the womb, certainly by the time we're infants, for most of us anyway. Then the blood sugar system starts to become disturbed. That follows uh, disruptions in, uh, uh, in uh, digestive functioning. And then you have a adrenal thyroid issue. And from the adrenal thyroid complex or the adrenal thyroid axis, all disease ensues. After the adrenals and the thyroid are affected, every single disease state follows. There's no such thing as a chronic long-term degenerative disease that does not have underneath it some kind of disruption in adrenal thyroid activity, which in turn does not have, is linked to uh, blood sugar problems and the digestive system. This adrenal thyroid axis means that if you have adrenal stress issues, it will ultimately affect the thyroid. And this is why it is impossible to address thyroid health without addressing the adrenal glands first. That is stress issues. When I say addressing the adrenal glands, I mean addressing stress issues. The failure, utter complete failure of the medical model to deal with the adrenal issues that underlie thyroid functioning is the reason for the absolute abysmal failure for, of endocrinology and, and mainstream medicine for dealing with what we call hypothyroidism. 
They're trying to work on the thyroid without working on the adrenal glands first and without working on the blood sugar system and also the digestive system. You cannot work on the thyroid without working on the adrenals, the blood sugar, and the digestive system. And there's an epidemic of hypothyroidism. Do you know every year one of the top, sometimes the number one best-selling drug, usually in the top five, but, but all, sometimes number one or number two is Synthroid or Levothyrox in the generic form of Synthroid. What does that tell you? It tells you a lot of people have hypothyroidism. And there's nothing, Zippo, the doctor can do if they're not addressing the digestive system and the blood sugar system and the adrenal glands first. That's so important. You can't work on the thyroid by taking Synthroid. It doesn't help. Or iodine, for that matter. Despite the fact that we have 15 million Americans who are diagnosed with hypothyroidism and millions more who suffer subclinically, they're not diagnosed, there's absolutely nothing, nothing your doctor can do to address the problem. Nothing. With a capital N. If you're hypothyroid, the only thing you're going to get from your doctor is thyroid hormone. Synthroid or levothyroxine, or if you have a particularly in intelligent so-called functional medicine, another huge scam, by the way, functional medicine, you might get armor thyroid. But that's not going to help your thyroid. That's just replacing the hormones, supposedly. It's not even doing a good job at that. As far as the underperforming thyroid gland goes, there's nothing in the doctor's magical bag of tricks that can do anything to help come to the rescue of your hypothyroid. You could, uh, this is because underneath the, uh, the hypothyroidism is adrenal dysfunction. And underneath that is blood sugar, um, dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar. And under, underneath that is digestive health problems. That tells you right there, di the digestive system underlies everything. That's why I always say work on the digestive system first. Whatever your health challenge is, work on the digestive system first. Then the blood sugar system, then calm the body down. You can think of your adrenal glands as your emergency energy glands. They produce three key hormones that are important for the body's stress response. These three, uh, three hormones are number one, the acute emergency hormone adrenaline. Number two, the salt retaining hormone aldosterone. And number three, the more long-term stress management hormone that everybody knows about called cortisol. Adrenaline, aldosterone, cortisol. Adrenaline is associated with super energy or super strength. It's our super emergency hormone. It's the most powerful of the three hormones. It comes out of the adrenal glands and bursts. In the short term, adrenaline facilitates energy production. It facilitates muscle contraction. When adrenaline comes out, we get superhuman strength. We do amazing physical feats. People have been known to run when they have broken leg, on a broken leg. Or if they've been shot multiple times, they'll get, somehow they'll be able to, to just run away from their assailant. Old ladies have been known to lift cars when adrenaline comes out and bursts. You get this superhuman strength, but you can't sustain hyperadrenaline for a long period of time. If a burst of adrenaline lasts too long, you're going to experience a panic attack. Rapid breathing, pounding heart, racing pulse, wooziness, dizziness, muscle shaking, cold sweats. You may ultimately faint. These are all signs of long uh, 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 adrenaline secretion that's going too long. Adrenaline is only supposed to come out really quickly and then disappear out of the body in short-term bursts. The other two stress hormones, cortisol and aldosterone, they're more long-term stress response hormones. Aldosterone is your salt hormone, your salt, uh, salt retaining hormone. And if you're holding on to salt, chances are pretty darn good you're dealing with a stress response. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-1610 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, pharmacist Ben here. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about cardiovascular disease, heart disease, hypertension, aldosterone, stress hormone, if you want to comment or have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off our websites. You can also purchase our truth treatment products at truth 
truthtreatments.com, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, made with 5% retinol, as well as a whole bunch of fatty, premium, moisturizing, skin softening, anti-aging vitamin C. Retinol and vitamin C are a perfect pair of active ingredients that go together really well. In fact, vitamin C and vitamin A are the only two active ingredients the only two skin health ingredients, the only two ingredients you'll find in skin products, topical skin products, that can actually migrate down to the so-called fibroblasts. The fibroblasts are the cells that live way deep in the skin that are uh, responsible for the production of fibers like collagen and elastin and also responsible for moisturizing elements like high aluronic acid. Um, most uh, most folks, most skin skin care aficionados, certainly a lot of women have heard about high aluronic acid. You see commercials for it all the time. High aluronic acid is really a great supplement to use internally, particularly if you're interested in bone building or connective tissue building from an inside out perspective. Supplements of high aluronic acid are readily available. You can find high aluronic acid in things like bone broth protein and bone broth. High hyaluronic acid is, as important as it is, is not something you can just put on top of your skin and expect to get the benefits of. High hyaluronic acid is an end product. It's a byproduct. It's secreted from fibroblasts, but that doesn't mean you can put it on top of your skin and get the benefits of it. You, the way you want to improve the high hyaluronic acid content of your skin is by turning on the cells that make it, the fibroblasts. How do you do that? Well, vitamin C and vitamin A. In fact, those are the only two active ingredients that can turn on that fibroblast. You can also use alpha hydroxy acids that will have a secondary effect on the fibroblast, and that's why skin peels and exfoliation techniques are so important, using chemical peels, which I'm a big believer in, alpha hydroxy acid peels. You don't necessarily need to go to a salon to have it done. You could use apple cider vinegar or you could use uh, red wine topically, but having a skin peel done by an esthetician once a month is really a good idea if you're interested in anti-aging your skin. And then when you're done with your skin peel or you're done with your exfoliation, drive in that vitamin C and drive in the retinol. And of course, the best way to do that is in high concentrations of vitamin C and retinol in the right form. Now, retinol is, uh, retinol is the right form, but vitamin C has to be fat soluble and it has to be stable. That's why I developed my Truth Treatment products, which you could find out all about at truthtreatments.com or Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and our Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you from the Daily Mail. This is cool. Came out uh, came out this morning, actually. Changing your diet to maintain healthy gut bacteria could protect you from nearly all age-related diseases, new research suggests. Headline here, healthy gut bacteria could help protect you from almost every age-related disease. Quote, imbalanced gut bacteria may be to blame for many age-related diseases, according to a new study from the University Medical Center Groningen in the, Nether in the Netherlands, unquote. The researchers found that poorly balanced gut bacteria in older mice could induce inflammation in younger mice when it was transplanted into them. So they actually took uh, uh, the poorly balanced gut bacteria from older mice, they stuck it in, they stuck the ba bacteria in younger mice, and guess what? The younger mice got old. The younger mice inflamed. The younger mice got sick. What's that to, what does that mean? It means that behind age-related diseases, which are basically chronic degenerative diseases, you will find messed up gut bacteria, dysbiosis. Where have you heard that before? I'm telling you, you guys, don't wait to read in the paper. Don't wait until it becomes mainstream. Don't wait until it's already everybody knows and you're already deteriorating because you've been dealing with a chronic degenerative disease that you've been trying to treat with prednisone. Don't wait. Get yourself on the nightly essence. Get yourself on fermented food. Start eating fermented food. Make sure you're using fiber, which feed the good bacteria. Make sure you're using vegetables, which contain nitrogen, which feed the good bacteria, as well as fiber. There are so many ways to support gut health, which will help improve all your chronic long-term degenerative diseases. I've been saying it for years. Dr. Wallach's been saying it for years, and now you're reading it in the Daily Mail. All right, from... Uh, this one is from the journal Psychotherapy and Psychosomatics. Antidepressants associated with significantly elevated risk of death, researchers find. 
antidepressants, uh, quote, antidepressant medications most commonly prescribed to reduce depression and anxiety increase the risk of death according to new findings by a McMaster University led team of researchers, unquote. You cannot take a prescription drug and expect to uh, be c better for it, period. There's no way to do that. You can take a prescription drug and mask your symptoms. You can take a prescription drug and lower your test scores, lower your cortisol scores, raise your bone mineral density, et cetera. But you cannot be healthier by taking a prescription drug, period. Now, not all, prescri not all prescription drugs are going to have dramatic side effects, but in the long run, if you're on a prescription drug for a long period of time, you will be shortening your life. It's not just antidepressants. The, the ironic thing about antidepressants is, for the most part, they're placebos. And you know, one in eight Americans is on an antidepressant drug. That's all. Oh, this is craziness. How is one in eight of us so depressed that we need to take a medication? What does that say about our culture? What does that say about the world we live in? In the book uh, by Erwin Kirsch, The Emperor's New Drugs, he's, he, does a study, um, he does a meta study of all the studies that were, a meta study is a study of other studies. He does a meta study on the research that's done with antidepressants and he determines that they're all placebos. They don't even work. They just have a placebo effect. And even though they don't work, even though they only work as a placebo, they still cause a significantly elevated risk of death and significantly elevated risk of other side effects as well. All right, from the Journal of Nutrition, maternal iodine deficiency can affect child development. Quote, a low iodine intake among pregnant women may be associated with poor language development, reduced motor skills, reduced fine motor skills, and behavioral problems when the child is three years old. These are findings from the Norwegian Mother and Child Cohort Study, unquote. Iodine is incredibly important for fetuses, for, pregnant, uh, for uh, developing brains and developing babies. Unbelievably important. The best way for a baby to get iodine is obviously through breast milk. And breast milk, me, uh, to get iodine in breast milk, that means the mother has to be supplementing with iodine. Mothers who are mothers and mothers to be, breastfeeding moms and mothers to be, please get on an iodine supplement. Use nascent iodine. You can also use Lugol solution or you can use Iodorol. I personally like Iodorol. I've heard great things about nascent iodine, although I don't have a lot of experience with it. One way or another, make sure you're using iodine. Used to be you could get iodine from seafood. These days, seafood is so contaminated, even the, even the government tells you not to, eat, not to uh, eat too much seafood when you're pregnant, which is unfortunate because seafood also contains omega-3 fatty acids, another critical, important, critically important nutrient for developing fetuses and developing brains. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information on the Bright Side right after this. On the Bright Side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, and we are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific at 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com with search engines up on both websites. You can search particular programs, review topics. If you missed a program or you want to review a program, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com are our websites with archives. You can also purchase longevity products off brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog posts, news stories, videos, lots of health information, all kinds of free health information. We do this for free, folks. We do this because we are dedicated to helping you have a better life, helping you have a better body, helping you get off your prescription drugs, helping you get healthy without the medical model, which doesn't do anything for our health anyway, ever. There's nothing the medical model can do for our health, ever, with the exception of emergency procedures. And, of course, there are times you need to have emergency procedures. And that's where the medical model really does excel. Give credit where credit is due. They can stitch all kinds of things back on our body these days that get hacked off and repair all kinds of things. And that's, a, that's great. That's awesome. But when it comes to long-term chronic degenerative disease, when it comes to how we live our lives, when it comes to our long-term health, there's nothing in the doctor's magical bag of tricks that can make a wits bit of difference on how we, uh, on our longevity or on our long-term health. The 
But that doesn't matter because we can do it all ourselves. And that's what this is about. And that's what my personal mission is about. That's what Dr. Wallach's mission is about. That's what we're all about at Longevity. And if this sounds interesting to you, if this sounds like something you want to participate in, and if it sounds like a good business opportunity to you, and it is, please call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can also sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. All right, continue on with some news stories here. We don't have any calls, so continue on with some news stories uh, that are interesting. I like this one, talking about gut microbes and gut bacteria. This is from... Uh, from uh, actually, I don't even know where this is from. University of, of Illinois at Urbana. Gut microbes may talk to the brain through cortisol. It turns out that gut microbes influence the brain. We know this. What's called the gut-brain axis, and they do it by changing the amount of uh, changing the uh, the processing of cortisol. Wrong bacteria ensure the release of cortisol. That tells the body that we're under stress. That means the stress response itself, the feelings of anxiety that are associated with the stress response, insomnia that's associated with the stress response, changes in uh, uh, decreased libido and changes in fertility that are associated with the stress response may be the result of dysbiosis, gut bacteria. Again, pointing to the primacy of the triangle of disease that underlies all health issues. Not only are gut bacteria and digestive health related to the blood sugar system, the second point of the triangle, of disease, but they're related to cortisol and stress hormone, the third point on the triangle of disease. Once again, we see these three points underneath everything, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the stress management or adrenal thyroid complex. That means if you're dealing with anxiety issues, if you're dealing with insomnia, if you're dealing with hypercortisol issues of any kind, once again, return to the triangle, go back to the gut. Work on using all your strategies for keeping the intestinal environment healthy, the intestinal environment bacteria-friendly. Fiber is so important. Make a, make a flaxseed beverage every day. Keep yourself, uh, keeping your bowels regular uh, by using a flaxseed beverage every day and supporting gut bacteria. And by the way, you know, when you have a bowel movement, most of your stool is made up of gut bacteria. So dysbiosis... Messed up gut bacteria can cause constipation. Fiber is so, so important. Not only does it keep everything moving, but it also supports healthy gut. Grind up flax seeds and chia seeds. Get yourself a coffee grinder. It costs you 10 or 15 bucks. Put your flax seeds and your chia seeds in there. Grind them up. You always want to grind up your seeds, by the way. They don't have anywhere near the benefits uh, for your intestine when they're, when they're whole because nature has provided them with a super hard shell, which will just pass through your digestive tract. But when they're ground up, not only are they a great source of fiber, these seeds, flax seeds and chia seeds in particular, but they're also a great source of protein. They're like 30% protein. That means if you do 30 grams of, of uh, flaxseed and chia seed, 10 grams, you're going to get 10 grams of high-quality protein, not to mention great omega-3 fats, not to mention zinc, not to mention vitamin E and the B complex, and of course, you'll be getting wonderful fiber as well. Add, a, add in a little cinnamon, some water. It makes the best, best little beverage. If you just do chia seeds, it makes a pudding. If you use coconut milk or coconut water instead of just straight water with your chia seeds, you get a coconut pudding. Put a little stevia in there to sweeten it up if you want, some clove, some ginger, some cinnamon. It is so delicious, you're not going to believe it. It's going to be great for your digestive system. It's going to be great for your brain. Omega-3 fats being really important for brain health. And, oh, for your little kids, for, in, for children, they'll love chia seed pudding. Start, your day, start their day off with chia seed, pudding, chia seed pudding. Start their day off with chia seed, seed pudding and a couple of eggs. Best breakfast ever. I always say to skip breakfast, but for kids it might, might be a little bit more difficult. Kids don't need to skip breakfast because they're burning through nutrients and, and burning through calories and burning through protein a lot faster than we adults are. So for kids' breakfast, skip the cereal, skip the French toast, skip the pancakes, use chia seed pudding, maybe a little piece of fish, a couple of eggs. Best breakfast. Throw in some bone broth protein, a, a little bone broth protein smoothie awesome breakfast. Your kids won't be tired. They'll have protein and they'll have fats for starting off the day and they'll be improving gut health um, with all the fiber. From the international, uh, from Loyola, Loyola University in Chicago, study provides new evidence that exercise is not key 
to weight control. Again, we've been saying this forever. Exercise is important, it's really important, but not for weight control. You gotta burn a lot of calories, you gotta be riding a lot of miles on your, on your, on your uh, bicycle or on your uh, walking a lot of miles on your treadmill if you plan on losing a lot of weight by simply using exercise. That's not what exercise is for. Yes, it's important to exercise. I am not diminishing the, the, the significance of exercise and the relevance of exercise for good health. But its main role in the body is in helping the body build muscle and helping support mental health. When we exercise, our body secretes BNP or BNF, brain, uh, brain natural fat. Uh, actually, I don't even know what that's called. Brain, it's a brain growth factor, BNF it's called. Got to look that up, what that's called. BNF is a very important brain uh, factor, brain, uh, brain chemical that supports the development of neurons, of brain neurons, of, uh, of synapses. BNF. I got to look up and see what BNF is. Exercise stimulates BNF. It stimulates learning. You know, if you're studying while you're exercising, that's a wonderful way to remember things. Moving your body while you're learning. Moving your body while you're studying. That's a great strategy for helping support memory. I forgot what BNF stands for, I'll have to look that up. In any case, exercise is important for brain health, exercise is important for muscle development, exercise is important for aerobic response, for supporting the, the body's ability to utilize oxygen, but where it's not important is for losing weight. Unless you're a marathon runner, or unless you're a high-powered athlete, but for most of us, we're not gonna lose much poundage by simply getting in the gym. The best way to lose weight, is to reduce your intake of calories and to support fat burning. You support fat burning by exercise, but you, can't, you have to make sure that you're working with your calories. Also, replacing, your, uh, replacing uh, high calorie foods with nutrient dense foods, making sure you're getting nutrients like the B complex and electrolytes, things that support metabolism, support the body's ability to burn fat. Ketogenic diet, ideal way to lose weight. Ketogenic diet plus exercise, that's a great way to lose weight. But exercise by itself isn't gonna help you lose weight. All right, uh, let's see, let me get you one more and then we'll see if we can get some phone calls. Vitamin D boosts, may boost IBD, that's irritable bowel disease treatment success. Vitamin D, low vitamin D may reduce levels of success of inflammatory bowel disease. Researchers in, uh, at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston analyzed data from 173 IBD patients with inflammation and they found that their success was based on how much vitamin D they had in their blood. Where do you get vitamin D from? The sun. Best way to get vitamin D. You can supplement with vitamin D, but the real way to get vitamin D, nature's, the way nature wants us to get vitamin D is by getting sunshine. Why? Because you can control, the body can control the amount of vitamin D that gets into the blood much faster, much better, much more efficiently when the vitamin D is coming in from the sun than when it is coming in from a supplement. Also, food-based food, food -based vitamin D, that is fish uh, and fish liver and also fish oil. Also, mushrooms are a good source of vitamin D. Organ meats, too, has some vitamin D in, the, in them as well. That's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening, friends. Please check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for information about all the longevity products. And if you want to sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team, 866-735-2470 is the number. Also, please check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.